where once it was thought nothing much was going on, now we have evidence of, of several, you know, unique homo species and possibly, you know, flor the Floresiensis, they've even thought maybe the ancestors of those were an early Australopithecine due to mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the small stature, suggests that they're not coming from Homo erectus, but something even earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Now that's interesting because if, let's say, an Australopithecine has managed to make its way down to Flores and then it hits Australia, it may be that all Homo have emerged in that region and that it, they've radiated back out and that they, you know, the, the base clade of Homo may be even down there. We don't know, but if Australopithecines are, are ranging the world, you know, millions of years, like say, let's say a million, two million, Three million, who knows, three years ago, right? I mean, recently they found evidence, I think up in, um, somewhere in the Middle East of, of early sites, 2.5 million years old. It's like hominin sites, right? Mm -hmm. So if we've got if we've got these Australopithecines, some sort, you know, or perhaps it's um, a very early homo that's outranging the world at that time, that really, really, really makes you think, why are we limiting the story to Africa? And again, this is why I take a bit of a multi-regional view. I think, yes, things probably are changing in Africa too, but we can't just discount all of these, these hominins that are everywhere else and just assume, well, they didn't play any part in the story. It's like, well, we really don't have any evidence to just lock them out in that way because we don't have the genetic data or anything that would really say that these are un completely unrelated hominins, right? Because we haven't been able to extract DNA from, you know, from anyone that early. I mean, the earliest we have is the Simulus Huesos hominins in Spain, which go back, I think it's 430,000 years or something, yes. like the DNA, right? So that's the earliest DNA we have. So anyone who sort of thinks, well, you know, well, DNA has solved it all, well, no, because we don't have any that's a million years old. You know, we're not right. extracting it from these really early hominins. So I think that's, not to sideline, but that's another point. I think a lot of people assume that we have DNA from the beginning of this story, you know, because you hear people say that, well, the DNA proves that we came from Africa. That's a very bold statement to make. Well, right? isn't there that, faulty evidence that they're working with there? Because isn't the genetic sample out of Africa that they're working with only like 5,000 years old? It's really young, right, compared to everything Very young, else. yeah, the oldest. In fact, the, the actual, the studies that were done that established out of Africa mm -hmm. were on modern DNA. They people like myself of, of, of African descent. Now, People have to say there's a huge leap to assume that the ancestors of modern Africans were always in Africa, right? That's a huge assumption. That's a huge a assumption. assumption. Because we are not giant redwoods. Yeah, we'll slowly creep along. And you can pretty much say, well, we know that the ancestor of this redwood is that one, you know, 20 miles that way, you know, these, these fossil finds, that's the ancestors, you know, this is that forest, an ancestral forest, because that's how, you know, trees spread, right? But we are humans, you know, we walk around, we go vast mm -hmm. distances, even in one lifetime, you know, yes. if I want to, I can walk across the whole of Eurasia in my lifetime. Oh, there are YouTube right? videos of people doing that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, people walk around the world, yeah. yeah? So, so the assumption that my African ancestors were always in Africa is really, really flimsy, yeah. And then we keep seeing that status as a fact. Now, this is one of the things that really gets me is when people say, yeah, the DNA proves we have African origins, because most of people don't even know that we don't have any ancient African DNA on file. Right. right. When I say ancient, not truly, truly ancient. Now, the oldest they found so far is down in the southern part, yeah, around 5000 years old, right up in the north. Uh, I think up in Morocco, they have some that's about 12000 years old. Mm -hmm. So that's the absolute oldest ever found in Africa. Now, 12,000 years ago has nothing to do with the beginnings of modern humans. Nothing mm. at all, right? So we have no DNA from the beginning of that. And even the Cima de los Huesos DNA is not from an ancestor of modern humans, you know? So we've established that, you know, that they, that population, as far as we know, played no role in, in us, right? Yes. Uh, the actual oldest, I think, is a sample about 45,000 years old from, I think it's um, from Romania, I think, or something. We've got, is it Ustish Jim? The guy, I can't remember pronounce it, but yeah. basically yeah, about 45,000 year old DNA, right, from a modern human, the earliest modern human DNA. And yeah. that's in Eurasia. So that doesn't help place us in Africa at all, right? No, no. So, so the, these are huge issues. So when someone says, you know, the, the DNA proves it, what they're really meaning is if you assume that the ancestors of the sub, you know, sub equatorial Africans had always been in Africa, and, and then you assume that they're the only ancestor, ancestral population of, mod, of other modern humans. If you allow all those assumptions, then you can say, well, our DNA seems to go back to them. Again, you have to also take an assumption that, that haplogroup L3, you know, emerged there and wasn't brought into the country, which, you know, we'll tackle. So mm -hmm. there's a flow of assumptions, each one of which is easily questioned.
right? So right. this this idea of certainty and that the DNA proves it is so frustrating because it's so untrue. 